Hi, welcome to Bookie, which unlocks big ideas from world bestsellers in audio, text, and mind map. Please download Bookie at Apple Store or Google Play with more features. Get your free mind snack now. Today we will unlock the book Who Moved My Cheese and Out of the Maze. Life is a labyrinth of choices, turnings in every direction. In this maze, everyone is looking for their own cheese. It could be a stable job, a healthy body, strong relationships, or love. In this search, it is inevitable to encounter turnings that will take you by surprise. One day, you may find your perfectly ripened cheese has gone bad or it has already been eaten, then, what will you do? These two books may help you with encouraging inspiration. The first book, Who Moved My Cheese, rapidly gained wide acclaim as soon as it was first published in 1988. The second, Out of the Maze, was not only an anticipated sequel but also a legacy left by Spencer Johnson, as it was the last book he wrote before he passed away. The first book introduces the maze. In this environment life for characters, two mice named Sniff and Scurry and two little people named Hem and Haw. The story describes how one day, their cheese vanishes, how each character responds and how they learn to cope with change in their lives. The sequel continues the story of Hem. Hem has stayed in the maze, and with the help of a new friend, Hope, he starts to take action. Little by little, he changes and transforms himself, eventually stepping outside the maze once and for all. Cheese is Johnson's metaphor for all the beautiful things we pursue in our lives. The four characters represent four typical reactions to a significant change in life. In this situation, some will be put on the alert, staying vigilant, and prepared for further dangers. When their cheese simply vanishes, with no explanation, they won't question who may be responsible but adapt to the new circumstances. Others indulge themselves. They don't acknowledge that there has been a change, they ignore it. Ultimately, such people may harden their resolve and eventually take actions. In order to do so, they must leave their comfort zone, overcoming their initial fear. Another type of person is like an ostrich, burying its head in the sand. They don't accept the change and live in the false hope that everything will reset to normal. They won't consider changing themselves until they are sure there's no other course. Perhaps, the vast majority of people are inclined to be like ostriches. The stories of these four characters are told in the manner of parables. Johnson is a vivid and witty narrator. His simple tales unfold, offering readers insight and wisdom, giving them encouragement and provoking them to question their choices. The two books are cultural phenomena, adopted as a coaching handbook and training manual by many top-notch organizations, used to help all sorts of people to improve their careers, marriages, and life prospects. Next, let's listen to this story in two parts. Part 1, Who Moved My Cheese? And Part 2, Out of the Maze. There are two mice and two little people living in a maze. One mouse is called Sniff, and the other is Scurry. The two little people are named Hem and Haw. Although Hem and Haw are no bigger than mice, in other respects, they look and behave very much like the humans of today. Every day, the four little creatures spend their time running around the maze, looking for cheese to satisfy their hunger. The labyrinth is intricate, with many dead ends in dark corners, as well as rooms with delicious cheese. For Sniff and Scurry, everything is quite straightforward. All they need to be content is to sniff out the cheese and enjoy it. Sniff will lift his nose in the air and pick up the scent. When Sniff indicates the general direction, Scurry will immediately run ahead, with Sniff following close on his heels. They won't be upset when they are unsuccessful and find a dead end or a corridor with no cheese. Instead, they note down the area they have already searched and try again right away. Although they often find nothing, they keep on with the task, scurrying around the labyrinth. Hem and Haw are more clever than the two mice and apply more efficient methods to locate the cheese. It gives them a better chance of striking lucky. This makes the two little people complacent, and they are inclined to look down on the two mice with their frantic methods. However, with smarter brains come more complicated emotions. Emotions disrupt and confuse logical thinking. Nevertheless, most of the time in the labyrinth, there is plenty of cheese to go around. So, for now, everyone finds their cheese in their own way. One day, all four characters stumble upon Cheese Station C. This is a place of abundance where all kinds of cheese are plentiful. 
From that day on, no one needs to search every corner of the maze for cheese. All they have to do when they get up in the morning is to put on their running shoes and go directly to the station. The two little mice still keep their habit of rising early. When they arrive at the station, they will get the first sniff. Then they can scurry around to check that all is in order. Once they are satisfied that nothing has changed, they take off their running shoes and enjoy the delicious cheese at leisure. However, they stay vigilant. While they eat, they keep their shoes, with laces tied together, looped around their necks so they can put them on immediately in case of an emergency. In the beginning, Hem and Ha behave the same as Sniff and Scurry, but after a few days, they get up a little later every day. They don't run but stroll to Cheese Station. Upon arrival, they take off their coats and stow them away. They hang up their shoes and put on their slippers, making themselves comfortable as if they were at home. After all, there is no rush. The cheese isn't going anywhere, is it? It is not long before Ham and Ha decide to move and make their home closer to Station C. They decorate their new place with pictures of cheese and mottos, like having cheese makes you happy. To Ham and Ha, cheese is more than just food, it is the essence of contentment and fulfillment. Cheese is a physical manifestation of total happiness and success. For Ha, having enough cheese is security. He believes cheese will enable him to build a warm home someday where he can live a harmonious life and have a family. Hem has a different view. For him, cheese embodies power and wealth. Every night, the two little people waddle home, full of cheese. Every morning they set out for the cheese station. They believe they deserve such a satisfying life because they worked hard to seek out Station C. But this perfect life is soon to change. One day, all the cheese in Cheese Station C disappears. Sniff and Scurry are not surprised. They had already noticed the stock of cheese was shrinking day by day. They sensed this was going to happen eventually. The two mice look at each other. As if by prior agreement, simultaneously, they take their running shoes from around their necks, lace them up, and set off to continue their search for new cheese. For the mice, who have great instincts and simple minds, the problem is straightforward, and the answer simple. When situations change, like the one at the station, they must adapt. It is as simple as that end of discussion. But Hem and Haw were not prepared for this eventuality. Haw is enraged. He hollers, who moved my cheese? He shouts out at the top of his voice, protesting that it is unfair. Hem stands beside Haw, too stunned to move. He doesn't want to face the terrible reality. The two of them spend a long while trying to figure out what to do, but all they imagine is to search nearby in case there is some cheese, any cheese, that is still left over. There is none. And they rant and rave at the injustice of it all. That night they return home depressed and hungry. Before they leave, Ha writes a plaintive message on the wall, the more important your cheese is to you, the more you want to hold on to it. The following day, after a restless night, tossing and turning in their beds, Hem and Ha rise early and go to Cheese Station C. Perhaps yesterday, they were both mistaken and will discover some cheese is still there. But they are thwarted in their imaginings. It's still an empty place. Hem goes over their predicament again and again. He convinces himself that there must be a culprit who stole the cheese. Ha suggests asking the mice what they know, but Hem scoffs at this idea. What would they know? They are nothing but simple mice. The two begin to disagree. Hem thinks they should seek compensation. If others stole the cheese, there need to be consequences. Hem says, we have a right to more cheese. Ha, on the other hand, feels that instead of endlessly evaluating the situation, it would be better to start looking for a new source of cheese. Ha and Ham were going around in circles, stuck in the empty cheese station sea, living in pain and denial of lost cheese. Frustrated, enraged, and hungry, they start to blame one another for their sorry fate. Meanwhile, somewhere else in the maze, Sniff and Scurry, after several failed attempts, arrive at a new cheese heaven, Cheese Station N. There they find even more kinds of cheese to enjoy. Ha imagines how delighted the mice would be to discover another cheese station and tries to encourage Hem to stop wallowing in pity and get up and set off on a new search with him. But Hem declines, saying that it's dangerous and he feels safe and comfortable here. Ha fears becoming lost and alone in the maze. 
He feels it's essential that they stick together, so he abandons his plan search. Another day, Hem suggests they should try to break down the wall and see if the cheese is hidden behind it. So, the next morning, they set out happily with chisels and hammers. But, no matter how hard and how long they work, they can't uncover even a scrap of cheese. Ha is beginning to rationalize the difference between activity and productivity. As a result, the two little people lay down their hammers and resume their vigil at the station, willing the cheese to return. As time passes, Ha and Ham have nothing to eat, and they get weaker, more agitated, and more upset. Finally, there comes a day when Ha can't take anymore. He mocks himself, I keep doing the same things, over and over again, and wonder why nothing improves. If this wasn't so ludicrous, it might even be funny. With this thought, Ha digs out his running gear and prepares to set off again to explore. He tries to explain to Ham that the cheese will not reappear and that when things change, there's no going back. That's life. Ha asserts, life moves on. And so should we. However, Ham ignores him, and Ha has to set out on his own. He leaves a message written on the wall, if you never change, you will become extinct. Next to the words, he draws a picture of cheese. He does this to encourage Ham to lighten up, but Ham doesn't even turn to look. Before he departs, in his mind, Ha visualizes reaching his goal. He imagines being lost several times over, but with persistence, finally, he finds another station of cheese. How excited and ecstatic he will be relishing the delicious cheese taste and aroma. His imagination is enough to encourage him to stick his head out. But, the maze is so dark and unknown. Ha can't help himself. He glances back at the warm and familiar cheese station C. He hesitates and feels his fear flooding back. Then he writes on the wall once more. This time it's a question, what would you do if you weren't afraid? Ha ponders this for a moment. He knows it's okay to have some fear because otherwise, people won't feel compelled to take action. But it is not good to be so afraid that it prevents you from doing anything at all. With fear still in his heart, Ha takes a deep breath, a right turn, and enters the maze, heading to places he has never been before. After many days without food, Ha is weak. He is not as quick as he was before. As he runs, he thinks to himself, on another occasion, if there's a chance, he will quit his comfort zone and adapt more quickly. Then, it will be easier. But, better late than never. In the following days, Ha finds a little cheese here and there. His discoveries give him confidence. However, just when he thinks success must surely be within his reach, he gets lost and doesn't find even a morsel of cheese to nourish him the next day and the day after. In frustration, he consoles himself by considering that running around the maze is much better than simply waiting in the old station like he was doing before. At least he has taken the initiative. Now, he is in control rather than merely allowing things to happen to him. The memory of Sniff and Scurry encourages him further. If the two mice can scurry forward without hesitation, so can he. Later, it dawns on him that the cheese in Cheese Station C didn't, in fact, disappear suddenly. The quantity was diminishing day by day. Towards the end, even the quality was not what it used to be. In the last few days, some of the cheese was rancid, but they didn't acknowledge it. They could have anticipated the coming change if they had been willing. The thought causes Haw to stop in his tracks. He takes a rest and determines that from this point on, he will be vigilant. On the wall of the labyrinth, he writes, smell your cheese often. So you know when it is getting old. Further days pass and Haw still fails to find any more cheese. He has become exhausted and begins to consider turning around and heading back to the old station to be reunited with Ham. It seems now he is more often afraid. His mind wanders and he asks himself the same question over again, what would you do if you weren't afraid? The moment the question forms, Ha realizes the root of his fear. He dreads running in the maze all alone. Then he remembers how, previously, running the maze made him feel free and brave. With this thought, he gains encouragement and decides to leave a message for him. This time he writes, movement in a new direction helps you find a new cheese. Looking into the endless darkness of the maze, Ha still has many dreadful fears in his heart, but with the realization that fear will only make things worse, he starts to do what he would if he wasn't afraid. 
he would continue onward. Back on the road again, to his surprise, he feels that he is starting to enjoy himself. A smile creeps across his lip. It is not long before he realizes he is feeling free, experiencing the joy of an adventure because he has conquered his fear. To bolster himself up further, Haw pictures himself reveling in all kinds of delectable cheese flavors. The clearer the picture is in his mind, the more lifelike it becomes, and the more confident he feels that he is going to find it. He stops and writes on the wall, imagining myself enjoying new cheese, even before I find it, leads me to it. Haw stops worrying about what he may lose and considers what he will gain. Now he sees that change may also lead to positive consequences. Now, with a positive mindset and his former energy restored, Haw speeds ahead. And soon, he discovers some pieces of cheese he has never tasted before. He tries them and finds them to be delicious. Unfortunately, the cheese station adjacent to this collection of cheeses is already empty. Someone must have been here before, leaving just a few small bits behind. Haw can't help thinking that if only he had moved on from Cheese Station C a little bit sooner, he might have discovered this new station before anyone else. Pocketing the handful of leftover chunks, Haw thinks of poor Hem and decides to go back to Cheese Station C and find out if Hem is willing to come with him to seek out other new cheese. He writes his thoughts on the wall, the quicker you let go of your old cheese, the sooner you find your new cheese. Haw is soon back at Cheese Station C. He hands Hem the new cheeses he has discovered. Hem thanks Haw but refuses to try the cheeses, saying that he doesn't like what he is not used to. All he wants to do is wait in the cheese station for the old cheese to be restored. Haw has to go away again, back into the maze, alone and disappointed. Now, embarking on a second journey, he is sure that even though finding new cheese will certainly bring him joy, cheese is not the sole or even the main reason for his feelings of happiness. He is happy to realize his fear no longer controls him and that he loves what he is doing, exploring, and moving ahead. Ha now believes it is just a matter of time before he finds new cheese, and what's more important, he feels that he has already found out what he really wants. He also understands the inevitable nature of change. He knows as long as you are prepared, when change comes, you won't feel lost or overwhelmed. With this new awareness, he writes on the wall, old beliefs do not lead you to the new cheese. When you forge new beliefs, you will behave in a new way. You will resist change when you believe it can harm you, but you will embrace it when you believe it provides added benefits. It all depends on what you choose to believe. Thinking of this, Ha writes a second sentence underneath the first, when you see that you can find new cheese, you change course. In this manner, while searching for a new cheese station, Ha reflects on what he has done in the past and notes down the things that enlighten him. Ha believes that if someday in the future, Ham leaves the old station, these sentences will guide him forward. With the expectation of Ham seeing all these words one day, Ha writes another phrase, noticing small change early helps you adapt to bigger changes that are to come. Ha continues to navigate his way through the labyrinth until he finds himself running down a corridor he has never entered before. He turns a corner and runs directly into Cheese Station N. This station is full of cheeses that Ha has never tried previously. He thinks he might be having a cheese hallucination until he sees his mice friends. Ha joins them, starts to relax, and gorges himself on all the cheeses he loves. Of course, he didn't neglect to take off his running shoes and hang them around his neck, just like his mice friends. Ha would have loved to go back to Cheese Station C to drag Ham out of his stupor, but Ha understands that Ham needs to confront his fear on his own. To move forward, Ham must relinquish his lust for comfort, and no one else can do that for him or persuade him. To grasp the benefits of change, he will have to experience them himself. Ha has already done all he can do to help him by inscribing his thoughts on the walls of the maze. Now, with a belly full of cheese, Ha composes a summary of all he had learned through this process, and he writes it on the most enormous wall of all in Cheese Station N. Beside it, he draws a large chunk of cheese. A grand smile creeps across Ha's face as he surveys his work. From that day forward, Ha checks the cheese inventory at Cheese Station N every day and often ventures into the labyrinth to explore new areas and learn more about his environment. He knows it is much safer and beneficial to seek the unexpected than to shut yourself off from the world in a zone of comfort. Today we are just sharing limited content. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller, please download our app. 
Just search for Buki at Apple Store or Google Play. Get your free mind snack now.